Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the difference in performance between SHR and RAID 1. Now for those of you out there that buy a 2 bay NAS or even bigger in many cases, you have got the option during setup to select the right RAID configuration for you. Now RAID has, um, sorry, Synology have their own RAID configuration available known as SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID and it promises to be a much more fluid uh, environmental platform for your storage than traditional RAID. For example, SHR gives you the ability to mix and match drives. You can put in different drives, which you're not going to do at the point of installation, but somewhere along the line, when you're adding new drives to an array or replacing drives, chances are the idea of having different or bigger drives might be a lot more advantageous to you a few years down the line. And that's something that traditional RAID doesn't give you, and SHR does. But when you're setting up your NAS for the first time, whether you don't know much about RAID or the fact that the choice has been thrust to you right there at the beginning before you've written so much as a kilobit, it can be difficult to know which one's the right one for you. So today we're going to focus on reading and writing and copying and behaviour between exactly the same NASes, in this case two DS918s from Synology. Both of them have got four TBWD Reds inside and both of them are in um, a mirrored environment. Admin test one on the left here, you, you may remember from previous videos regarding SHA, um, is in a RAID 1 environment. It's a RAID 1 NAS. Uh, we've already created the storage pool utilizing the drive media that's on there, and we've already created our volume. In both of these cases, we are going to be utilizing BTRFS. In a later video, we will be doing BTRFS versus EXT4 in this same test. So admin test one, this NAS here, has got that set up there in a RAID 1 environment. The other NAS features um, a very similar but not, and that is the SHR. Once again, we look at the storage port, same drives across both of them, 4TB reds or 3.64 if you wanna be super precise, and both of them are in that mirrored environment giving us that space back. Now you can ignore the used portion because I think there's some remnant files from our original testing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now send over 50 gig of files to these NASes on both of them. So on both of these NASes, I'm going to create a shared file and folder. In the old NAS, of course, we've still got the folder 50G test. And on this NAS, I'm going to create another shared folder and give it exactly the same name. 50G test. And again, this will be exactly the same. It will disable the recycle bin, probably won't need that. We won't bother encrypting it. We could do a test later on to show encryption versus non-encryption, but that's a test for another day. And now we're gonna create the shared folder. We're gonna give all users access, just to make it nice and straightforward. And there is our shared folder, so remove that. And there's our 50 GB test. And what we're gonna do is we're going to see how long it takes for this NAS to transfer that fo those files and upload them to the device itself. So let's have a look, let's get the right one there. And we want footage. This is where our 50 gig of files are. We'll leave that there. And hopefully we'll use the stopwatch here. Come on Windows, don't let me down. What we want is a stopwatch. And we'll start this, reset that. And we'll transfer these files over into the first NAS in our RAID 1 environment. Shouldn't make a blind bit of difference, but let's double check anyway. Let's go. Ignore the first few seconds there. Pop that there. Carry on with our upload. And there we go. It's complete in a little over 18 minutes. And once again, that was on our RAID 1 environment of 50 gig. So again, you could probably do the math there at home, but what we're gonna do now while you do that is we're gonna do exactly the same test, this time on the SHR volume on the uh, admin test 2918 NAS. So once again, let's drag that over. Let's get our stopwatch up and start checking. And you may have noticed it said 22 files because one of our files had a problem and I think that's because that file is broken. And I think the Synology didn't want to let me transfer that file over. But what we're going to do is the same thing again. We're just going to fast forward time and see how long it takes for the SHR 
to let us transfer these files. In theory, it should be exactly the same, if not a fraction better. Um, and while that does that, we're gonna leave this other stuff here because in the next stage of our test, what we're gonna do is the original NAS here. We are then going to conduct an internal test where we create three duplicate copies of the files inside and do this exactly the same thing with admin test two to see if caching or basic file handling is improved across both of these NASes. Um, we'll leave that there and I will fast forward and come back to you when this transfer has completed. And as the final file just completes, we can see that the difference between the RAID 1 here, SHR, is so small as, as if to be completely undistinguishable. Uh, between the two of them, this one, the other one took 18 minutes, give or take, and this it took 17.51. And I think, take into account any small network irregularities and of course the small delay between when I started the upload and when I click start, I think it's fair to say that both of them transferred at an identical speed. The next thing we're gonna do is these files that we've created inside here, what we're gonna do is create a brand new folder for both of them. So both of these devices are now going to be um, create a new folder when I'm not mucking around pressing the wrong button doing stuff let's get rid of that and this time we're going to create a folder on both of them just called testing testing same goes for you folder testing testing and what we're going to do is see how long it takes the system to duplicate the files internally on behalf of both devices. So what I'll do is I'll set the clock in a wee bit, but basically what we're looking for is the time difference between them performing these tasks. So in the case of both devices, I'm going to select all but the top, I'm gonna to right click, I'm gonna click copy, and then I'm gonna start transferring and pasting into these folders. And let's begin, just overwrite, start the test. Same goes for you, all files except that. Copy, go into testing, testing, go there, paste, overwrite. So again, we are gonna have to bear in mind that there's gonna be the tiniest delay between these two devices in terms of the overall time taken because obviously testing, uh, admin testing two has taken slightly different. But because both of these file operations we're now witnessing are internal, it completely removes the network speed factor between both of these devices. And what we're gonna do is see how long it takes each individual NAS to duplicate all 50 files internally into a new directory. So between the two of them, straight away, for the SHR RAID does seem to have taken quite a substantial lead. Now, this may be the fact that the files it's selecting to move first are different, perhaps, in the case of the RAID 1, we're transferring the video files first rather than the audio or docs and stuff like that because this is a mixed bag of files. So the overall speed may differ towards the end of this. But right now, what we're seeing is both of them sort of going up and down in terms of the time remaining because of the files they're transferring. And both of them, not dissimilar, but right now the RAID 1 seems to have taken a slight lead. And what I'm going to do is fast forward towards the end of this video when this should have been completed. So with the time difference between the two of these boxes producing 50 gig of copied data with no more than about 10 to 15 seconds difference, I think we can safely say that SHR and RAID 1 do not hamper you, either one of them, in the ability to create data internally without the network. The final test we're going to do involves encrypted data. Both of these, we're gonna create a brand new shared folder that's gonna be completely encrypted. So we're gonna call both of them ink test. And both of them, we're gonna remove the recycle bin, both of them are going to be encrypted with an encryption key. And this encryption will be AES NI level encryption. And we will double check for all checksums for data integrity in the background, effectively creating the safest possible environment possible for uh, data to not be intruded upon and for background checks. And of course, that is the BTRFS um, shared folder encrypted being created. And likewise, we can do exactly the same thing here with our encrypted data on the second device. So we'll go here, we'll go back to there, we'll create a new shared folder. Once again, we'll call this one ink 
test. Maybe spell it correctly. Remove the recycle bin. Encrypt. Add the password again. Moving forward. Enable the background checks. So we're not going to put a shared folder um, quota on this. We'll have all of them so we can read and write, of course. So Enk test has been created on our SHR. And again, both of them very similar indeed. Um, speeds in which it's going to be built. And we'll move our way back to both of them. So they've now both got the Enk test. And in both of these devices, what we're going to do is again, we're going to find that folder that we created earlier on both of these two devices. Testing, testing. And once again, we'll do exactly the same thing on the other device. There's our testing, testing, both of them. Should be 50 gig in size, 50.1. The other one, 50.1. And both of them we're going to copy into the new encrypted container we've created. So we're going to do exactly the same test what we've been doing previously. Um, just remove some bits around here so we can make sure this is all good to go. Remove that. We're going to need our stopwatch ready again. Reset that and we'll get ready to begin this process. So, testing, testing, we're going to copy that, put it into the folder there. And the same again for this device. We're going to copy, go to ink test, paste, overwrite. And once again, this is the same test, start that off. And once again, with the left device being a RAID 1 configuration, sorry, uh, yep, a RAID 1 configuration. And our second NAS using SHR. And we're going to bench test how long it takes the device to put 50 gig in one of those encrypted containers on both devices within both of these RAID infrastructures. I think we're going to see very similar results, but straight away the time remaining is going to keep fluctuating just like we saw previously. But let's wait until the end of the test to find out more. So as we're reaching the end there, the encrypted volume on the RAID um, 1 scenario did finish first with the SHR just trailing behind just a little bit there just to see which one would be completed first. I think right now it's safe to say that they're so similar that you can't really compare the two, but still nevertheless this has been SHR versus RAID 1. Next, In the next video we're going to be adding a drive and converting the RAID 1 into a RAID 5, as well as extending the SHR to see which one does a quicker build and then doing some of these self same tests next time. But otherwise thank you so much for watching, buy your NAS from span.com, read about NAS and NASCompares.com and subscribe to learn more. Thanks a lot for